I want to give you a global glimpse into the CMS world over this week. If you remember in Acts, there was consternation in the Jerusalem church over whether Gentiles, that is non-Jews, should hear and respond and become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Paul and Barnabas discuss this with the Jerusalem church, Paul says in Galatians 2 verse 10, that the only thing they wanted Paul to remember was the Paul. The very thing the Apostle Paul said I was eager to do. And it seems as though that is an apostolic ethic of love that we need to continue to adopt. During COVID-19, many inequalities have been demonstrated and exposed around the world. In Latin America, they have been really hard hit by COVID-19. Five countries of the top 10 countries with registered cases are in Latin America. And that is Brazil and Mexico and Peru and Colombia and Chile. The health services are failing to cope. Many of the poor have no access or transport to get to various healthcare centres. There are stories of people dying on the way to hospital or just dying in the street. Crematoriums are full and poor families are having to cope with their loved ones that have died still at home, not knowing when they can be cremated or buried. Mission partners David and Shelley Stokes say that now there's more infections in northern Argentina amongst indigenous peoples in the Chaco. So please pray for protection for them. In India, the cases are still rising at an alarming rate, although they seem to have tailed off a bit in Pakistan. But on top of this, Bangladesh and parts of India are also facing floods. And the economic hardship on the poor for the daily workers, the migrant workers is very severe and their future prospects are not good. Likewise, in Africa, those, those devastating impacts have suffered and fallen most heavily on the poor. I heard from Heather Sharland, a mission partner in Uganda, who was saying that the rise in teenage pregnancy has happened during lockdown. And that actually there are more child marriages as people are trying to find money to survive and cope. And in fact, some uh, girls have also been trying to commit abortions at home with drugs and with herbal, re uh, herbal approaches. And this has really led to really devastating effects on their health. So let's pray for the poor, and particularly for pregnant women at this time. And in Lebanon, two weeks after the explosion, people are still trying to come to terms with the pain and their loss. They've lost their love, some of their loved ones. They've lost properties. They've lost homes. They've lost the familiar places where they used to go. And for both Lebanese and the refugees who have managed to shelter within Beirut, they're fearful and wondering what the future will hold for them. In fact, many people want to leave Lebanon at this time. But the encouraging thing is that the church will remain. Our mission partners, Audrey and Colin Gibson and Phil and Sylvie Good, along with fantastic churches like the Church Resurrection Church of Beirut and All Saints Church, are responding and trying to meet the needs of people, not just for food, accommodation, clothing, but also to meet their emotional and spiritual needs as well at this time. The church and others are being a source of hope for those that are often facing despair day after day. So I want us to pray this week and I want us to pray that we will continue to remember the poor. The very thing our people in mission around the world and our local organisations we work with want to do. So as we go into this week, let us remember what uh, it says in Ephesians. To pray at all times, with all sorts of prayers, 
making supplication for all the saints. Let us remember the church as it responds to these uh, massive challenges and how it seeks to bring hope, compassion and to put in practice that apostolic ethic to remember the poor. And I pray this week that you will have a very prayerful week. That you will know that as you pray with us, that the Lord hears our prayers and answers them. Amen.